Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Today we're going to be talking about diffuse shading. And diffuse shading is a part of the Fong shading model. Alright, so there is ambient, diffuse, and specular. These are the three points we're going to be talking about. And we're going to be putting all this stuff together to create some nice lighting like I showed you in the demo. So the first part in order to do some lighting is to understand it. So let me just do paint. Let me show you. So our cat that we had, if I just draw it out like this, lying flat on the floor. Before I do that, let me just run this and see if everything's fine. So as you can see, as I rotate this, there's no effect on the pixels. They're all the same. All right. And there's no light in the scene. There is no light right now. This is just 100% the color of the cat. There's no lighting on it. So what we're going to be talking about today is the cat and how diffuse shading works and how ambient lighting works. Now, ambient lighting, let me just start off with that, it's really easy. There's nothing. It's just a color we apply with a certain percentage. So it's basically a light. If there's no other lights on and there was a little, little hole in your window or your drapes or whatever, they would be coming in and all the whole scene would be lit with this light. Not from any particular direction, but all 360 degrees. You would have some light on everything just a little 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 bit that's ambient all right it's very very little tiny you don't need ambient but you can have it so everything doesn't look black if there's no light uh, now let me just get started here so we have our cat what we have are positions colors and texture coordinates for all the vertices right because that's how our libs looks right here what we need is one more thing we need this glm vec 3 normal all right, so go ahead and add this to your vertex right now. Now let me explain why. Because a normal, as we talked about, is a perpendicular vector to the object. A normalized perpendicular directional vector. Now that's a mouthful, right? Basically, it goes from all these points here on this cat, which is basically two rectangles. The normal will be perpendicular to it, so 90 degrees from the surface everywhere. This is completely pointing 90 degrees from all of these points. Uh, and what we are going to need in our game or our demo now is a light position. So we're going to have a position and this light we're going to be creating is called a point light. So it's going to be shedding light in all directions. It's not like a flashlight or something like that or a, a sun which has the same direction everywhere. It's a point light. So we'll have different directions like this, like, you know, like this, 360 degrees. And what we're going to need is the position for this light and we're going to have to create in the fragment shader a vector. So we're going to need a vector from the position that we want to calculate for this pixel right here. For example, we want a vector going to the light from the pixel. Now this is going to be done from all pixels. So here as well, we'll have a normal, which will automatically be created for us by the graphics card because we send in all the normals for all the vertices. We'll have another normal here. Just imagine this being perpendicular. I don't know, just something like that. We'll have another vector go in like that. So what's the difference here? Imagine a normal here as well. Just imagine this being a normal, right? And we have a vector going up like this. These two are exactly identical almost, right? We're going to be normalizing all these long vectors. So they're the same length, basically. So they're between minus 1 and 1. Uh, so they're all normalized. So they're just directional vectors. But I just did this for illustration purposes. So this is going to be normalized right here. Uh, anyway, here, the angle between these two vectors is very different, right? Here, there's basically no angle. Here, there's a small angle. And here's this big angle. And what we do is we take the dot product of these two vectors to give us the cosine value between these two. And that's basically between minus 1 and 1. So imagine that being a percentage. So if the light, if this at this pixel, the light's going to be 100%. Here it's going to be about 60%, and here it's going to be like 30%. And we multiply that value with the pixel's color to kind of dim it. And here's there isn't going to be any dimming. Here's going to be a little dimming, and here's a lot of dimming. So that's basically how this works. So I hope you understood that. Uh, I'm sure there's better videos explaining that. Uh, but just remember, diffuse ambient and specular fong shading model just remember those 
Uh, and we're gonna just start by adding our normal here. And then we're gonna add a few things in main. So where you have your model here, VAO, VBO, and all that stuff. Let me just see if I'm recording. I am. Uh, all, all this stuff. We're gonna be sending in a normal here as well. So remember here we send in all our three important values. We're gonna be sending in normal as well. So the normal has is at position three, has three floats, and we'll activate three here. And we'll just say offset of normal right here. Everything else is the same. Now we just told the graphics card that we're sending in this much stuff for this shader right here. Or we're sending in this much stuff in the buffer, basically. That's what, that's what this means. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add some normals. If you go all the way up to where you have your vertices, right here. Now this is going to be red. It's like, oh, no, I'm expecting normals too. Now just shift alt the color, copy paste this right there. And we'll say these are the normals. Now I'm going to show you later on in a video where we're, we'll talk about the uh, geometry shader, how to calculate the normals on the fly. But here we're just going to hard code them. So just put zeros everywhere. Make sure everything is zero. All right, everything is zero right now. And just put a minus one on all of these Z values here. Because it's the, all the normals will be pointing towards us from all the vertices, right? So imagine it being a, let me just show you how that looks. So what we have is a quad, right? With a cat texture on it. And the quad is made up out of two rect or uh, triangles. And just imagine all their normals. Now this is pointing straight towards you. I'm, I'm drawing them like crooked like this, just so you know, it's 3D, but they're pointing all straight towards you. That's basically what we just did. We set four normals pointing in minus one Z direction. So just towards the, the face or the screen like that. And this is going to interpolate for us, the graphics card, when we send all these in. These normals are going to be interpolated at each pixel in this whole object. That's why we can use, for example, at this point, the normal is also going to be the same. Just like that. Because all of the normals of this triangle are the same. If these were different, this would be some kind of mixture between all of the three. But since all of these are the same, we're going to have the same normal everywhere in these triangles. All right, that's why this works. So we're just, I hope you understood that, but everything is pointing towards you. All right, boom, the normal is finished. And we made sure we sent it in. Now, what we wanna do is we go down here to after all the texture stuff, uh, to init uniforms. I'm just gonna create another part here called lights. And I'm gonna do a glm vec3 light plus one light plus zero equals glm vec three um, I'm pretty sure you can do this uh, let's see 0 0.f 0 0.f 2.f just like that so we'll play around with this value a little bit we'll see and then we want to send this in so gl uniform um, 3fv Geo get uniform please can't type today location from the core program and we're gonna get light position so we want to set this light position in the shader to our uh, this this light position value here glm vec no glm value pointer um, so don't worry, we'll talk about how to calculate the normals later because you, with uh, objects that have a lot of triangles, you might want to calculate them um, to make it easier for you so you don't have to hard code everything. But we'll talk about that later and we'll talk about the geometry shader as well. But what we, we're doing now is we're sending in a position for the light. So a point light is basically just a position and it's going to shed light in all directions from that position. So that's basically what we're doing. All you need is a position. So we sent that in. Uh, then we're gonna go down here and we'll just see so everything is correct everything is correct here no biggie so now we send everything in now in our fragment shader we want to create that vec3 so uniform vec3 light plus zero 
I was, let me make sure I type the name correctly here. Uh, light pulse. Where's our model thingy here? In the in its uniforms. Where's it? There we go. Light pulse zero. Light pulse zero. So it should have the same name here as it has here. All right. So there we go. Uh, and as well, just comment this whole thing out that you have from the beginning, because we're using two textures here. I just want to use one texture, just our cat. So I made this new thingy right here, where I removed the, the other texture from the calculation. So ambient light diffuse light. Boom. Easy. Now we have normals as well. So to get our normals in our programs, what we need to do is we need to actually tell the shader that we're expecting a normal as well. So just do normal here. Vertex normal, a vec3, and at location3. That's important. We'll, we'll be sending out another vec3 called vs normal here. And we're going to calculate. So vs normal equals, I'm going to explain this, model matrix multiplied by vertex normal. So you're like, what the hell's going on here? Oh my God, what is this? Well, the normal has to be in world space as well. It shouldn't be in local space. It should be in world space. So your normal is going to kind of move as your object moves. See, this is the object's positions, vertex positions. We're multiplying with the model matrix as well. And we're doing the same thing with the normal. So this is mat3 here. All right. And you're saying, why are we using a mat3? Why, why are we not making this into a mat4? Basically, we don't want this to have a W value, this last value here, because this has to do with perspective and stuff like that. The normal should not be kind of moved around and uh, affected by this value. So we're using the matrix as a mat3, and we're keeping the vertex normal as a vec3. So you don't want to multiply this with the full model matrix, just the uh, translational parts, not the W part. And as you read into it, go read on OpenGL, learn OpenGL.com. As I always say, just check it out. It explains it really well. Uh, but just make sure it's math through here. Um, and you don't want to multiply it with the view and the projection matrix. You just want to keep it in world space, not in clip space or view space. So now we have a VS normal coming into the fragment shader. So we have to tell it, okay, we're expecting a VEC3 VS normal. That's it. That's all we need. So now we can use the normal of this object. And to run this, just to see that everything works. No issues. All right, we still have our cat here. No issues in the shader. Boom. So what is the ambient light? Well, let's do this. Uh, let's see. Vec3 amb ambient light. So this is just some light hitting our object from all around, no matter what other lights there are. So it's just going to be a really tiny light. Just, just tiny, tiny, tiny. All right. And the way we do this is we multiply the original color with a combination of all the other colors. So this is the vec4 ambient light. F. So this is our ambient light. So we're multiplying it with this like that. And the reason I made these two parentheses here is because we're going to be adding the diffuse light like this. All right. But just for now, let me just show you the ambient light. So now the whole object is going to be very dim. Probably you won't even be able to see it. You can see it really little. This is just if there's no other lights, this is what happens. Uh, and now we're going to be doing the diffuse calculation. So this is where our vectors come in. Remember the vector going from the fragment position, the VS position here that we have, to the lights position, normalized. We're going to be calling this the post to light dir vec. So it's a long name, but it explains what it is. Position to light and normalize because it's a directional vector. Normalize like this. And we're going to be doing this. Normalize. And light plus oh, it's going to be going to the light so vs position minus light plus just like that so we normalize this new vector 
So VS position to light position. Boom. Now we have a new post to light vector that we can use. We're going to be having a vec3 uh, diffuse color. Vec3 1.f, 1.f, 1.f. Basically, there's no special color here. This is just the maximum color right now. Uh, float diffuse constant or diffuse uh, we'll just call it diffuse and this is the dot product we're talking about so we're going to be using this and the normal so dot post to light their vec and the vs normal so remember that normal we talked about that was perpendicular and kind of the angle between those two vectors we're talking about this is that part so the dot product of those two vectors now the problem is the dot product gives you a value minus one to one and we don't want that we want it to be between zero and one so we're going to use another function called clamp clamp uh, between zero and one right here boom that's all you have to do so you clamp it between zero and one so the min value and the max value and this gives us our diffuse constant. Now we need one more thing, the vec3 diffuse final, which will be our diffuse color multiplied by our diffuse. So this is kind of a percentage of this color, how much. And we're just going to be adding this to diffuse final 1.f. So hopefully this will work if it doesn't crash something crashed abort abort i don't even see what happened i didn't see really what happened let me just see what it says light post zero okay abort uniform victory light post i'm so dumb light post zero that's one issue there's more issues oh there weren't more issues oh oh we have diffuse lighting oh oh look at that look at that look at that look at that just look at that boom you see how it kind of fades and there's some ambient light when um, it's completely kind of angled there you go there you go that is beautiful that is beautiful now you can move the light around i'm pretty sure i don't know what happens if you put it at minus two i'm not completely sure it should be behind the camera then yeah that's not good well oh there it is what the hell is that oh okay we put it further into the scene so that's where the light was so there's no light oh there's there's the light right there boom oh see how that that's kind of cool that you can kind of see the light yeah there you go that's pretty sweet you can kind of see the light right there nice cool there you go that is diffuse and ambient lighting for you here they are please go check out all the uh, kind of documentation on that as well pretty sure you'll understand it because you guys are all smart and beautiful please keep learning uh, if you have any questions just write them down in the comment section um, and I'll help you as much as I can and hopefully in the next video we'll be talking about specular lighting and that should be fine. Thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.